Hello everyone and welcome to this week's plugin tutorial. This one I'm going to be showing you how to make basic Perlin noise inside of your plugin. Perlin noise is essentially random noise which can be scaled up or down to create different effects from clouds to film grain, add colorization and a whole bunch of different options. Today we're going to be going over the basics of how it works and uh, how to implement it in an After Effects or Premiere plugin. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the plugin code for this in the GitHub link down below. Make sure you follow us there for coding updates and in the description, follow me on Instagram as well for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, UXP plugins, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the link in the description down below by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, which comes with cool perks like Discord status, badges, emojis. And also in the description, check out the links to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to check out some of the other tools and products I make. All right, so if you check out the wiki page for Perlin Noise, this is where you should start any process of learning how to make something with the plugin, there's usually already some person in the 80s or the 90s who created some mathematical equation which is super useful for creating something cool. And with Perlin Noise, you can generate everything from this, which you probably already see as sort of fractal noise, all the way to virtual landscapes using the different luminance values as elevation or organic surfaces and a whole bunch of other things. Basically what you need to know about uh, Perlin Noise is it uses a sort of random vectorization to point to a random direction and that's what kind of allows it to snake and create different uh, linkages of grain particles so to speak. That's sort of the super simplified way. You can go through all of the details if you want but we're basically just going to be looking at this implementation based on some code and uh, it's going to allow us to create this effect which right now is just some nice noise inside of After Effects. And I also have a scale slider set up which might allow us to plug it in and then achieve different scales and different looks um, which may let it appear more like a fractal noise at a, a large scale as well. So if you want to get started, go ahead and download the code in the description. I'm going to be basically just going over it. There are several main functions, which I'll explain. And then let's see if we can integrate this scale slider. So in this case, we are using a smart effect, which I don't think I've made a tutorial yet on, but it's coming. I promise it is. There's quite a lot to cover and uh, I want to make sure I get a lot of the details right. So. In this code, we just have a smart render uh, for 32 bits per channel. So, you know, if I put this in a different bit rate, um, we're going to get a dark image. So it needs to be in 32 bits per channel for this to work. Um, and we're going to run something called Perlin32. Let's take a look at our Perlin32 bits per channel function. In here, we just have our basic setup stuff where we have our structure that we have coming in from uh, that we've defined in our H file. And then we kind of just have the code here set up. So all of this is really simple, except for the noise function, which ends up doing a ton of stuff. So we have an X and a Y, which is basically in this case, our current pixels X divided by the width. And then for the Y, it's our current pixels Y value divided by the height of our composition. Uh, these are hard coded, but you could easily put it, you know, inside of your GIP structure and then have your width or your comp width stored into there. Um, after that, we have n, which is sort of the randomization uh, value, which goes into a whole bunch of things. So this is based on uh, a couple of random functions. I have messed around with this a little bit. Uh, it requires an x, a y, and a third value, and this goes into the noise function. Uh, this is where it starts getting a little bit convoluted, and I'll explain it the best I can, or at least to the best of my abilities. Now this is where noise sort of becomes a rabbit hole and goes into more and more functions and does a whole bunch of calculations that frankly I am not uh, familiar with. So first it takes in an x, y, and a z and it essentially does some math and it finds the relative x, y, z based on this cube that it's uh, essentially created to generate this noise inside of and then it computes some fade curves. Uh, from what I understand, this is basically so that the different, you know, noise patterns are not all individually and in the same opacity and same intensity. Um, it's actually going to fade, you know, between gray and white or gray to black. So that's important to have this fade functions. Then, of course, this hash coordinates of the eight cube corners. I'm not classically trained in programming to know enough about um, 
you know, hashes and that sort of thing. And then finally, it uses this very complicated algorithm, which is called LERP. This is basically a linear interpolation algorithm, and it uses a whole bunch of LERPs and GRADs. Um, GRAD converts the lower four bits of the hash into 12 grading directions. I believe that's the random vector direction that this uh, it does. And it just does this whole calculation, which honestly just copy and paste um, and modify if you need. And finally, we return a value. And the return value from noise, how do we use that? N ends up being the value of our RG and B. So basically, it's generating a random intensity pixel between 0 and 1, or uh, black and white in 32 bits per channel. And I have it divided by 3 here just to experiment a little bit with it, but you don't have to. And uh, with this, this is going to create a gray pixel using the same end value. And then we, for alpha, you can put whatever you want. Um, let's go ahead and just like turn it down to 0 0.2. Um, and go ahead and restart and run this. So we'll go ahead and select the layer. And apply Perlin. As you can see, now we have 0.2 as our alpha opacity, which is exactly what we chose right here. And then all of our end values, let's turn off that, are now randomized. You can see they're randomized anywhere from black to white, uh, maybe not all the way up to white. And let's go ahead and increase our opacity to like one. And then I'm going to, one cool trick I've learned that I should share is if you're tired of every time you restart your plugin, your last used plugin isn't the right one, apply your plugin, close the project using After Effects, and then relaunch it from Visual Studio or Xcode. Uh, if you just restart it from Xcode or Visual Studio, it's going to use whatever the last, last used effect was. So hopefully that uh, improves your life just a little bit. Now if we go ahead and try again. Now we have Perlin right there. We can use the Control shift alt e shortcut. Now, as you can see, this is much brighter, much, uh, much more like the TV noise you're used to seeing. And the alpha is completely opaque, which makes everything much more visible here. Now let's start messing around with these values. I'm going to take um, my GIP scale, which is the direct value coming in from my uh, slider. And we're going to add this value to both the X and the Y values here. And let's see if that will then give us a more dynamic look or if we need to place these uh, scale values somewhere else. And I believe the scale value is set to 100 by default. So essentially what we're doing is saying a random value between 1 and 100 plus our scale value times our uh, X value, I believe. So we're getting an error here. That's because sometimes when you throw in random values, it's going to mess up these complicated algorithms. Maybe if I move the parentheses, can make sure that math gets done first, perhaps. I have had this issue before where certain scale values will cause uh, a weird crash around the linear interpolation step. So hopefully we can get past that. Apply Perlin. And once again, we're getting an issue here. So one thing I'm going to try is maybe increasing the value of our GIP scale. Also, what is it? Is it an int? No, it's a long. So it should be supported as a kind of float. Uh, let's go into the param settings. And let's set it to 500. I need to figure out if it needs to be a small or a large value. I think if I can either push it to be a high value or a super low value, I can get it to work properly and give us some kind of uh, dynamic sizing. Okay, 500 seems a little bit too much. Let's try. Okay. 10 appears to work and it's incredibly small. What happens if I make it one? I can't tell if that's bigger or smaller. Uh, it looks the same. And then once we get up to a certain value, it does that. So, 
small value is working. Why don't we divide this whole thing by 100 instead of generating a random number? Because we don't need necessarily as random. You can randomize it every frame, I suppose. That's one cool thing is if you want to create a sort of noise, uh, a nice randomized looking noise. Adding some randomization to all these values will help keep it unique and different looking every frame. But we also need some control with our size slider. So that that is just a wash. That is a wash of color. If I turn it up, whoa, we can see it happening. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so you can see it kind of scaling down into view here. Let's Let's crank up our uh, range here for our value uh, from 500 to maybe, I'll say let's do 5,000. So the key was actually to make the number a lot smaller. Basically, um, we're taking this scale slider value, dividing it by 100 and multiplying that by the X or Y uh, and feeding that into our big complex amount of uh, randomization and linear interpolation. So now if I just crank it up, I don't know what the max might be, but a lot higher than this. Awesome. So now we can adjust the size of it. And as you can see, every frame, it's the same. So we can adjust this in a second. You'll also notice at certain sizes, you get these sort of columns or pillars. I haven't yet found out why this is, but whenever you get to really large sizes, they start to appear. So let's change this, yes, to 15,000. And then back in our Perlin function, add some randomization. Where should we put it? I could apply some randomization to the X and Y positions, perhaps. And what this will do, should we add or subtract? Probably, yeah. What this is going to do is every single frame, it's going to add a little bit or uh, it's going to add a little bit or nothing, basically a random amount between zero and 100 to our X or Y. So this should give it a sort of randomized X and Y input every time. It's not going to use the absolute X and Y position that's being fed in. We're going to try and randomize it. And then we can also include our scale to make sure every single frame kind of has this changing appearance. Let's make sure this works. And we'll scale this. Oh. Okay, so there's obviously a max that we shouldn't go past. This looks like about 12,000. So let's make it a max of 10,000, I say. We'll make the default 5,000. Okay, and now when we apply this, we can see our pillars. Uh, it looks like we need to refresh our cache again. Oh, that has a nice appearance. So now you can see we're getting this sort of fuzziness. You can just barely make out the pillars, but because we're applying this randomization to the in and out, uh, the input pixels X and Y, it kind of creates this nice, uh, nice faded look. I actually like that a lot. And of course we can adjust the size and see that it, it creates this sort of, uh, if you've ever used a blender in cycles, this is kind of how it looks when you render it without too many passes. It sort of needs some refinement over it, but uh, overall, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this, which I will upload with this updated uh, information as well in the description, in the GitHub link, follow us there for coding updates and also follow us down there on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, some tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Comes with cool perks like Discord status, badges, emojis, and much more. And also in the description, check out the links to AE Scripts, Adobe Exchange, and Gumroad to see other tools and products I create. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.